Today on the Mr. Maple Show, we have the top 25 Japanese maples by Talon Buckle. Hey guys, I'm Matt. Welcome to the Mr. Maple Show. We do this as a podcast on all major podcast platforms. We also air these videos on YouTube every Sunday at 8 p.m. And there's a wild live chat. You're definitely going to be part of that community. So you can check these videos out on the Mr. Maple Show YouTube channel every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. So we've already done the top 50 through 26 that was last week's podcast. So if you haven't watched that, make sure or listen to that. Make sure you go and listen to that podcast. We've got some amazing plants that Talon Buchholz introduced, and Matt and I have argued down our list of the top fifty of his introductions. And today we're doing twenty-five through number one. Guys, we fought it out. We we got in here and we hashed it out. Tim and I got in a room and we wrote down each of us our favorite Talon Buchholz introductions. Um, not an easy thing to do, and we've broke this list down to just our top 50. Uh, you, you could make a list of maybe even top 100 plants by this man. He's he's a legend because he's named so many for good reason. If you haven't already, definitely earmark going and listen to our full interview we did with Talon Buckholz. He's a legend in the nursery industry. If you like horticulture history, uh, you, know, you definitely want to check that one out. We got to interview Talon. We sat down with him. It's one of my favorite interviews we're ever going to do. And we really got to interview him and talk to him about his life. And he just opened up and gave us such a good interview. He's been super influential on us here at Mr. Maple. So definitely take a second and check out our full podcast on Talon Buckholz. So some honorable mentions that didn't make it to the top 25. Fairy hair, that was Talon Buckholz's very first introduction with Red Cloud. And uh, Algeton. I mean, that's an introduction. Amazing weeping green Acer Japonicum. But I guess we'll go ahead and start off with number 25. Acer Palmatum, Dark Ghost. Yeah, this one had to call, fall on the list here somewhere. It maybe even could have moved up or down. Uh, it's easy to debate some of these Dark Ghosts being what I would consider the last of the official Ghost series. Now, this is the last tree that Talon Buckholz named and put that term Ghost on. It was a little bit more timed with the new Ghost, what we considered the post-Ghost series of Celebration and Nebula and some of those other plants that didn't quite... Uh, get that ghost moniker on them. Dark Ghost did though, so I consider it part of the OG Ghost series because, uh, again, Talon Buckholz named it and it's got the term ghost in it, so it has to be part of that original Ghost series. So, number 24, Acer Palmetum Yellow Threads. I could have argued for this one to be much, much higher. This is one of my favorite introductions of Talon Buckholz's, but we settled at 24. This is a yellow Leonard Lobum style. That's amazing. I mean, this is a medium to small Leonard Lobum style that gives you some yellow green color that you don't get out of any of the Leonard Lobums. So anybody listening to this list could realize that Tim's whole top 10 could probably be yellow plants. So thank goodness Matt has negotiated some of these down in the listings to get some diversity <laughs> in here. Tim's whole top 20 might even be yellow plants. Uh, the uh, Acer uh, Palmatum Yellow Threads is a personal favorite of ours, too. We did a video on this because we have a beautiful, large specimen of this. It is a Leonard Loblum Japanese maple, so it has that strap leaf style foliage. Uh, if, if you watch the YouTube channel, definitely go check out our What is a Leonard Loblum video where we explain that elongated strap style foliage. And uh, one of the first real, true, interesting color variants from red or green on this. I mean, there's certainly some other unique ones in the trade, but... A yellow is kind of unprecedented. So for people who didn't listen to 50 through uh, 26, we have some notes on these plants by Talon Buckholz. And yellow threads, he found as a seedling that was germinated in 2005 from Cotonoito. And he said it prospered in full sun in Oregon. And it's done pretty well for us with a lot of sunlight here in North Carolina as well. Yeah, I'd say a good bit of sun's even picked up that that kind of highlightery bright yellow in the early spring uh, really showy plant in accompaniment to 
Uh, mine and Tim's own anecdotes about some of our favorites. We do have personal notes from Talon Buckholtz on many of these cultivars that we're including in this presentation. So Tim keeps kind of referencing some of these notes that were just basically personal notes Talon took and shared with us on the origins and you know what some of these came from as seedlings or where they originated at. So it's it's always great information to be included when you can. So at uh, 23A, 23B, <laughs> we've got Spring Delight and Mikazuki. These two came in at a dead tie. There was no separating it. Now, the honest truth is we got through the list and we realized we didn't have Mikazuki on there. So we did actually sub Spring Delight, which is a lovely lace leaf with a purple border for Mikazuki. Now, Mikazuki is the first post-ghost. So this is the first of that reticulated style variegation that Talon Buckholtz named and didn't put ghost on it. So this would be the very first of those new ghosts, if you will, from Talon Buckholtz. Acer Palmatum, Mikazuki coming in there at number 23. And it really gives you some unreal colors of pink, purple, and it gives you some really nice colors of yellows to oranges in the fall. The name itself, Mikazuki, means crescent moon. Yeah, it is a, a lovely tree. I like how uniquely shaped the leaf is. Um, it really makes a nice palette for that reticulated foliage. Now, this one also, it, its colors are a little bit more Amagi Shiguri-esque. It's a little bit more violet in its color, especially if you can give it early morning sun. Uh, it's a very unique one. It's not a linear loblum, but the foliage is so uh, heavily divided, it almost has a little bit more strap leaf look to it, especially on a larger plant. Um, I really enjoy it, and that's why it dethroned Spring Delight. Spring Delight going into the honorable mentions there uh, on today's uh, page. Uh, so many fun plants here. It's hard to narrow down just the top 25. Coming in at number 22, we have another lace leaf. This one had to make our list. Acer palmatum dissectum shu shidari. Now, the name means orange and weeping. It was introduced in 1998. It is a very uniquely colored weeping lace leaf. I mean, it makes a good small to mid-sized weeping lace leaf. Great for containers. But it really has more of that orange-red kind of color to it. And the leaf itself... Every time the leaf, a lot of times lace leaves will have a leaf that is very hanging down. This one often is very wide and is really showy how it sort of displays its lace leaf on its on its leaves. One of my favorite fall color maples. I mean, that bold orange you can get on this one in the fall is really showy. It's what a lot of people think the fall color on orange yellow can get. It's it's premium peak orange fall color. Yeah, yeah, e exactly. And Shushidari is an amazing plant. And it definitely deserves its spot at number 22. Great candidate for container gardening or in a landscape. It's going to go out and pair well with any of your classic lace leaves from Waterfall to Crimson Queen. This one's going to look very uniquely different and provide you with some very different color footprints there in the landscape. Now, coming in here at 21, we've got one. You know, these are going to start getting heated. I mean, the, we're getting down to the nitty-gritty here when we're getting into the top 21 Talon Buckholtz introductions. Uh, you know, feel free to debate these in that comment section. But at number 21, we've got Grandma Ghost. Man, how how <laughs> right? How many good introductions do you have to have that Grandma Ghost doesn't fit in your top 20 for it's us? It's getting controversial here. <laughs> Grandma Ghost is a white reticulated Japanese maple with green veins. Its leaf is heavily divided. Um, I mean, this ghost type is an amazing. This is a classic part of the original Ghost series. Uh, this is a plant that I, I simply love, and it's hard to believe that this plant has fell to number 21. Yeah, it's still uh, a classic today, Grandma Ghost. Uh, you know, I'll have to say I kind of chuckle because this this is a terrible side note, but I've had people buy memory trees, and they bought Grandma Ghost. I was like, whoa, that's a little dark, but a funny plant nonetheless, whether you're spreading ashes or just enjoying it in the landscape. Grandma Ghost is one that brings that high-intensity drama that elongated leaf is really something special. It kind of stretches out that reticulation, gives it almost a finger-like appearance. It's very ruffled in its appearance overall, and uh, lovely shades of golden yellow to uh, oranges in the fall. I've had some really nice shades of yellow on this one, though. It's a showstopper. Guys, we're down to the top 20. The top 20 Japanese maples by Talon Buckles. We started at number 50. We've made it all the way down to number 20. What do you think falls in the top 20? You know there's some great classics. If you're involved in the live chat on YouTube, make sure you go through there. Guess which are your top 20 of Talon Buckholtz's introductions chosen by Mr. Maple. All right, coming in here at number 20, we've got Acer Palmatum Golden Falls. 
Now this is a lovely weeping form of Ryusei or Ryusen. I like to think of this one as Ryusei X Katsura. Now I often tell people as soon as I say that, that I would say Golden Falls holds its color even a little bit longer than Katsura and it doesn't leaf out quite as early, but this is going to give you everything you love about Katsura size foliage and that orangey yellow new growth in the spring and a weeping format. Now, Talon Buckholtz always goes with the term Ryusei, and he says that Golden Fall Falls was a seedling from Ryusei that he found, and he said, out of a large batch of Ryusei seedlings, 10% of them display the, the weeping habit. And out of all of them, this one was the one that was amazing. All the rest of them were used as rootstock. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did later on our part two, he did introduce Yellow Cascade, so he did find another one he liked a good bit. Um, Golden Falls, uh, excellent tree. It's one we produce a lot here at Mr. Maple. It made our top, uh, sales trees of the year 2022 because we were producing the heck out of it. Uh, we love it. It's a small leaf form, uh, oranges in the early spring to yellows late and a bold red in the fall. It's super showy. It's become very popular for a low graph in those hanging baskets. A lot of people are growing that one in the hanging basket to get some diversity there of color and their hanging basket garden, but a really cool one. And if you want to do that, go check out our video on how to grow a Japanese maple in a hanging basket. We're at Brian Rule's home now in uh, Hendersonville, North Carolina, and we go and look at his hanging baskets he's made with Japanese maples. There's some amazing things that can be done with that. Golden Falls is an amazing way to have a yellow weeping selection in a hanging basket. So guys, these are our top listings uh they're probably only just going to get more controversial from here on out from the things that are not listed and the things that made the cut but at number 19 we've got another ghost series this one is sister ghost i've heard people say this is their favorite of the ghost yeah. series i mean this also has some serrations to the leaf mm -hmm. this one has one of the most prominent veining of the white ghost types with almost like a green vein in the leaf with white on the rest of the leaf Sister, very heat tolerant too for a ghost series. Yeah, very very heat tolerant. Sister Ghost is an amazing classic tree. How how does it reach number nineteen? <laughs> yeah, it it it's you know it's splitting hairs here uh, with some of these. Uh, really good plant to be growing though. Uh, the entire ghost series we celebrate that here at our nursery. I think we gave Martha Ghost the honorable mention. If you're wondering where Martha Ghost is, it wasn't too prominent in the trade yet. Although we're working on fixing that. Sister Ghost is a classic ghost series. And uh, I would say Talon's probably most famous for the Ghost Series. There's a lot of great introductions, but probably uh, I would say one of the things he's most known for. All right, so we're going to Talon's notes. Easter Palmatum, Sister Ghost, is my favorite in the Ghost Series. Oh, Did wow. Did you hear that? It, it, he said at this, at this time, this was his favorite of the Ghost Series, and he finds it amazing to be grown in full sun in Oregon without burning. It originated as a seedling from Kasagiyama, and was named and introduced in 1996. I would have never guessed Kasagiyama as a parent plant to Sister Ghost. Yeah. Those uh, colors again, are so different. Talon reiterating that heat tolerance. I've heard of people growing Sister Ghost in Atlanta and Sun and Good Success in Zone 8. Uh, it is one of the more heat tolerant variegated plants. You can get that one out in a little bit more sunlight. Typically, the more white you get in a Japanese maple or pink, the more late day shade they need. Sister Ghost, once established, does tend to be a little bit more durable than a lot of other variegated plants. Coming in at number 18, Acer Japonicum, Giant Moon. Guys, we had to get this one on the list. It's uh, one of Talon's few Acer Japonicum introductions. Uh, love Giant Moon. It's got that large, gigantic foliage. Uh, I'm a huge sucker for Acer Japonicums. If you don't know, they're some of my favorite plants. This one has that dinner plate style foliage. If you can get it in some late day shade, that foliage will get even larger. Uh, Giant Moon, coming in at number 18, had to be on the list for me. I'm looking at the notes here, and I could say so many things about Giant Moon, but this was a seedling from Akinata Folium, also known as Mei Kujaku, the dancing peacock. Never would have guessed it how Mei Kujaku is so divided. Giant Moon has that large rounded leaf. I mean, it's amazing when you start seeing the parentage of these plants. It was named and introduced in 2003. Giant Moon is spectacular. I mean, it has one of the larger, more rounded leaves of the Acer Japonicum full moon Japanese maples. And I love this plant. It's one of the plants that Matt and I sought out when we were first getting into Acer Japonicums. We're like, we got to get giant moon, got to get giant moon and love, love what this plant does. 
get it in some shade for its largest foliage. You almost get like a glossy translucent kind of pubescence over top of the leaf. It kind of gets a little bit of a sheen glow to it in the early spring. Uh, brilliant reds are the typical color, but I've had oranges and yellows in this one as well in the fall. Typically really brilliant red is what I, I note on my giant moon in the fall. It is a showstopper for color though. And you know, a must have for any of the big leaf japonicum collectors. Coming in at number 17. Frosted purple. Now we probably could have bumped this one up. This one we went back and forth with, uh, uh, some of these again are splitting hairs. Frosted purple, probably one of our most heavily sought after of the new ghost. It is, um, frosted and purple. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great color. I mean, think of everything you love about purple ghost, but in a more lavendery, softer color. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's like, I think of it as a more durable, more upright Olsen frosted strawberry that can really give you some really nice reticulated colors and even a little more purple colors than the Olsen frosted. We're getting a little more pink colors on the Olsen frosted. Almost more lavender. I mean, it's hard to describe some of these colors. It's a softer purple. Is, is the only way I can really describe it. I mean, it's frosted. It kind of looks more of a creamy purple to it, maybe. And then late summer, I love when this one has that lime green glow across the reticulation. I mean, that's probably one of my favorite times for frosted purple is that late summer color where you see that lime green glow. Yeah, we've helped make this one popular here at our nursery. We were one of the people that got this one first, got to really evaluate it at our place. And uh, we're so grateful for that. It was a a showstopper. I mean, this one arrived as a gift from Talon Buckholtz. Um, I, I remember when it first arrived at my parents' place, I went out there and opened a little package. He'd just sent it individually with a note and it said, Hey, I hope you enjoy this one. And I mean, we opened the box up and we're high five each other. He'd sent us a, a gift of a frosted purple to help evaluate it early on. And, uh, sometimes Talon likes to say, let's let the market decide which are the best. And, uh, frosted purple, it, it does well in the market. It's a popular plant. Everybody sees this one and likes it. And so it keeps coming back for good reason because uh, people respond to that color pattern. So Talon says this was a seedling from Purple Ghost that had more pink purple color to it, more of that pink in the, than, the, than the purple, and was selected and germinated in 2003. Interesting. He's really had a lot of these under evaluation for so long. I mean, a lot of these new ghosts, they weren't hitting the trade until maybe even 2020, 20, 2019. I mean, some of these were, you know, we like to evaluate things for a while. He certainly had a lot of these under observation for well over 10 years. So coming at number 16, Acer Shirasawanum Joan. Yeah, Joan is another Shirasawanum X likely, one of those hybrids of the full moon maple. And this one, you know, again, you could probably move it higher up on the list if, you're, if you really want to debate. It depends on how much you love the Acer Shirasawanums, but Joan, always popular, coming in there at number 16. So I think Talon is like us and that everything's his favorite because here I'm reading his notes. <laughs> right. Don't just blame us for everything being your favorite. <laughs> Acer Shirosanum Joan is one of my favorites. This is Talon's quote. <laughs> right. And the name means elegant in Japanese. Plum red leaves are veined in green and yellow and red seas show off above the foliage. It is a slow growing broad selection. The original seedling is now 10 feet tall after 20 years, 10 feet tall and wide. I mean, it is a super colorful Acer Shirasawanum out there in the landscape and garden. Yeah, you got to be growing, Joe, and it's, um, it's a good one. And, uh, you know, uh, Talon Buckholz's wife, who is Japanese, helps him a lot with some of the translations of a lot of these. So he gets he gets the good nomenclature on his Ramanji. His, his Ramanji's on point for any of the Japanese-named cultivars. Uh, coming in here at number 15, you know, uh, it, you could say every one of these is a personal favorite. This one, really, customers respond really well to this one. At number 15, we have Acer Palmatum Nebula. Yeah, I love Nebula because everything's in the name. And the spring color on this thing is outstanding. It's out of this world. You get some really amazing shades of unreal colors of whites with pinks. And it looks like the Milky Way Nebula. I know Matt and I were uh, doing a, a talk, going out and speaking to garden cl a garden club. And it happened to be at the same place where this guy had a satellite, uh, a uh, telescope up looking up into the galaxy at a nebula and Matt and I were like, could we check that out? And we sort of showed him the photo of what nebula did. And he's like, that looks just like the Milky way nebula. Yeah, it was really interesting. And a uh, Talon, you know, can be so poetic with these. And sometimes you get into it and you're like, wow, this guy is just next level, right? Especially on his name. And, and a nebula has lighter colorations, typically at the eye of the nebula or the center of the nebula, getting into those darker shades. And that's certainly a lot of what you see in the early spring, 
with more of a purplish outside of the leaf to a lighter inside. Another reticulated veining one. It's got that heavily etching throughout every single leaf. And uh, Nebula, what a fun name for this one. I mean, really cool looking plant. Nice grower. Tends to be a, a more vigorous one of the new ghosts for us. Not uncommon for it to put on a little bit over a foot of growth a year. So it does get out there like Purple Ghost and Amber Ghost. It tends to be one of the more vigor of that post ghost or that new ghost series. Uh, I, I like it a lot. I've really been impressed with it as a grower. And uh, again, the customers have responded. That everybody likes this one. It sells out pretty quick. I love Nebula midsummer when you start getting some of those greens into it, mm -hmm. those lime greens. It looks almost otherworldly. And that's what makes me think about Nebula, even though I know the ne colors of the Nebula. Just that late summer color is amazing when you get Nebula. When it's lost some of that pink color and you just get that lime green in there. It is spectacular. It gives you some good red fall colors as well. Uh, Nebula is an amazing plant. Coming in at number 14, Acer Japonicum Orange Fan. Yeah, uh, again, uh, Talon hadn't introduced a ton of Acer Japonicums, but when he does, rest assured it's making our list. Huge fan of Acer Japonicums. This one gets some unique orange blushing over top of the green. I use that term blushing. Uh, NJ Acer, Ed Shin came up with it for his introduction, Blushing Beauty. I think that makes the perfect accompaniment to orange fan. It's more of a red hue over top orange fan being more orange and blushing aptly describes what this one does. It has greener undertones to it, but a blushing of orange over top. I know orange fan was one of my top plants that I had to get as soon as I found out about it. And I didn't have it because the colors getting some of that spring color, new growth on Acer Japonicums isn't something you see that often. Oddly enough, Orange Fan was a chance seedling from Meiku Jaku, also known as Akinata Folium. Completely different leaf structure again, but this one has that rounded leaf and that amazing color on the new growth. Again, leafing this one out slowly and providing a high dappled shade will give you your best bronzing, your best orangish color. If you can give it early morning sun, late day shade, or even high shade, that early morning sun kind of picks up a little bit of that orange to it and really brings out some of those tones in it. Uh, high heat areas sometimes don't see how orange this one can get. It kind of flushes onto that greener stage. Still late summer, you know, when it's being very vigorous, you can still get some of that orange hues over top of it. Huge fan of this one. You don't even want to know what we paid at auction for this. We saw this one at a Maple Society auction. I believe it was in a three gallon. And Tim and I broke the bank to get this one in our collection originally. And uh, Talon laughed at us and then sent us one for free <laughs> as, a, uh, as a gift after he saw what we spent on uh, a smaller one. Uh, he sent us a larger one just to kind of be like, hey, guys, I'm glad you uh, donated that much to the Maple Society, but uh, here's, here's a bigger plant for you. So number 13, this is going to come out of surprise for a lot of people because this is one of his lesser known Japanese maples, but is one of our favorites. Yeah, at number 13, we have Acer Palmatum Green Tea. Now, this one just gets some really cool shades to it. I mean, it definitely has that green tea appeal to it, especially midsummer. But I've had so many malting shades throughout this one and some intense, bold red fall color that I think could rival Osakazuki. I, that's how I like to describe it. I think it's got some, it's like an Osakazuki with an amazing spring interest. I mean, you get some of the amazing colors of the sort of pink color that's unlike any other Japanese maple on a large Osakazuki style leaf, green during the summer, and then during the fall, you just get some outrageous outrageous orange reds. Very vigorous. Uh, maybe we can get some dendrologists involved and see if there's another hybrid involved with the species beside palmatum. It certainly reminds me of some of the things I like about hot blonde and some of that bleaching it gets to it, some of that interesting color pattern it gets to it, uh, some of those lighter kind of um, a green tea colored shades it gets. They're very unique, not often seen in palmatum, so maybe there's some other influences going on there. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this one, though. It's vigorous. It's colorful. The fall color is impeccable. Um, it's been very durable for us. It's been a fan favorite too. I know, I know I've talked to several customers who said, I mean, Heather Strong's a big maple collector. And she said that was one of her favorites she'd ever seen. A lot of people really see this green tea in that color. It stands out. Uh, you know, a, a lot of collectors will talk about greens and reds and there's so many, you know, colorful things on this list from Talon Buckholtz, but there's a lot of interesting nuance in some of those greens and green tea has some of that really Interesting nuanced color changes. So we're coming up to number 12, Uncle Ghost. Man, it's getting heated. 
We're we're into the top twelve here. Uh, you know, the, these were heavily debated. Uncle Ghost is one of the more popular Ghost series ones when we list it. It gets some really crazy shades of pink red in there. Um, always sells out really quickly. It's a popular one of the Ghost series. Uh, definitely one of the, the probably lesser produced. You don't see it around a lot, even though it's a great plant. I love Uncle Ghost. This plant is just amazing. It's a good mid-sized upright Japanese maple that just gives you some really great spring colors with that reticulated veining. It's not as rare as something like Martha Ghost, but it's it's one of the more uncommonly seen of the Ghost series. And it's to me has some of the best colors of the Ghost series. I mean, this is an amazing plant more people need to use in their garden. Yeah, it's more of a true pink red. I mean, it, it really picks up. It has that reticulated variegation. Obviously, it would describe with a lot of the Ghost series. Excellent one to have in the collection. Acer Palmatum, Uncle Ghost coming in there at number 12. All right, guys, we're hitting that home stretch. Uh, I'll, I'll let Tim introduce this. I know it's one of his personal favorites, and he probably would have let me, he probably would have fought me to put this way higher up on the list. I, I like it a lot, though. To me, this is this is like a number six or seven. I mean, I love this plant. Acer Palmatum, Strawberry Spring. I mean, I, I definitely could be persuaded to move this one up further. You'll hear some of our ones coming up. Kind of hard to budge some of those. I mean, they get really intense. Strawberry Spring, amazing plant. When I first saw this one, I mean, my eyes bugged out. I looked like the wolf that's that's looking at somebody on Droopy where your eyes just went super big and your tongue wet rolled off the floor. I, I remember seeing this in a presentation before I actually had this one. Uh, Tim and I gave a presentation at the Southern Nurseryman Association one time we were presenting, and we got to go and talk about Japanese maples. And our friend Don Shadow, we'd print off uh, – Talon's presentation for him. Uh, Don Shadow was going to give Talon Buckholtz his presentation. There's a room of about 300 people, uh, all nurserymen in the room. Talon Buckholtz couldn't make it. And so Don was going to give his presentation. Uh, we had about 30 minutes in between our presentation and Talon Buckholtz. We walked off stage and Don Shadow said, guys, that was really good. Why don't y'all do Talon's presentation as well? So I, I felt really cool that uh, luckily we'd done the research. We knew his collection uh, we pulled that off without a hitch. I don't think many people knew that we hadn't given that presentation before. Uh, but one of the first times I'd ever saw that was in preparing for that scene in Strawberry Spring. And I'll never forget one, one, one given that presentation and wanting Strawberry Spring in my collection. The colors on this is, are unreal. It is truly one of the most strawberry pink Japanese maples that's out there on the market. That baby pink with reticulation, it is amazing. So let me read some of Talon's notes on Acer Palmatum Strawberry Spring. He says, Acer Palmatum Strawberry Spring is one of my favorite new selections. Again, he uses the favorite term, but it remains to be seen how we'll do in production. It was a favorite along with Acer Palmatum Celebration of Guy Malo of France, a European maple expert. I mean, Guy is actually a good friend of ours as well. Really cool to see that Guy was there at Buckholz's nursery seeing strawberry spring and saying, Hey, that should be introduced. Right. When you're getting into some heavyweights like Talon Buckholz and, and, uh, Guy Malo, I mean, Hey, those guys know their plants, uh, you know, big dogs that have been around a long time, introduced some cool plants. And, uh, I think it's high praise for him to pick that as one of his favorites from Talon as well. It's a showstopper. It's one that always draws uh, a lot of attention. And again, Talon sometimes likes to say, especially with the new ghost, he, he said, I'm going to let the market figure it out sometimes. The market likes Strawberry Spring. That's one that's always popular for us. I love that plant. I mean, what that plant does with the reticulation and the pink, there's nothing else quite like it. All right, guys, we're breaking into the top 10 now. Top 10 introductions Matt and Tim have picked of Talon Buckholz. Uh, You know, go ahead and start criticizing us now. <laughs> Everybody's going to get their knives out. What didn't make the list, what did make the list. We're down to just the top 10. And something got bumped because a new one got put in there, and that is Purple Curl. Purple Curl is a very new introduction by Talon Buckholz. We actually have the original one here at our nursery, and Talon actually gifted us uh, one of these one time when we were visiting Oregon, and he kind of took us into a back greenhouse and said, guys, you got to have this one. He actually went around his nursery looking for one to give one because he said, this is a plant you'll really want. And it really is. This plant has a curling leaf with this very uniquely malting variegation that I've only seen on Purple Curl and Magic Moon. 
Yeah, it's a unique one. Um, it, it's a uh, it's it's a very odd leaf. Like so, it almost looks like something's wrong with the plant. There's not almost a better way to say it. It looks crazy. The leaf curls everywhere. It gets that that variegated kind of yellow bronze in color over top of that deep purple. So the leaf, the tree leaves out a very bold, almost light green or excuse me, light purple. Uh, you know what what we joke is almost that Barney purple color. And then it starts to get some splashes of gold and bronzing in And that. orange. Yeah. And everywhere those splashes hit, that leaf curls. So unique. There's nothing else quite like this style. And Purple Curl coming in at number 10, it definitely deserves this spot. We know that Acer Shurasalonim, Magic Moon is a Shurasalonim. Part of me wonders if there's any Shurasalonim influence in Purple Curl or if this is something that we're seeing in both Palmatum and Shurasalonim. Let us know in the comments below if you're on uh, w- watching this on YouTube and in the live chat. What do you think? Okay, guys, number nine, we've got First Ghost. So Acer Palmatum First Ghost, this is actually the symbol for Buckholtz Nursery. Obviously pretty high on his list if it's the symbol for his nursery. Uh, Talon Buckholtz actually gifted us some art one time that is the original picture that he has there that's the symbol for his nursery of First Ghost. We have a placard. We're going to, you know, we, at some point we need to probably hang those up in the background of the podcast here. But we have uh, like a hardwood picture. Talon, wildly known for, or, you know, resoundingly known for his photography skills. He's one of the best horticulture f- uh, photography people you'll ever see. And uh, it's hard to beat his picture of First Ghost, too. People often wonder where the first, where the Ghost series came from. And here I've got the story right here in his notes. Acer Palmatum First Ghost originated as a mutant branch on the top of Beni Shigatsusawa. That's also known as Aka Shigatsusawa for those who are listening. After a few years of growth, I saw it one evening just before dark, and it looked for all the world like a ghost hovering over a darker tree. At first, it was simply named Ghost. Then, before any of uh, any were sold to First Ghost, when he realized he had developed a ghost series. It was introduced in 1996. Classic tree. I mean, you can't have a Talon Buckholtz list and not have First Ghost on it. It's kind of the OG that started all the Ghost series there. I love that purple border it gets to it. It's a nice purple border with that white creamy reticulation in, in there. That purple border fades a little bit after the spring, but it is such a showy display. Even the new growth will have that bright purple border to a reticulated eye to it. And uh, yeah, it's kind of the one that got the whole ghost series booming there. I mean, that that he saw that tree and thought it looked like a ghost hovering over another reticulated form. And from that, you get the entire ghost series. So we're going from one ghost to another ghost. From number nine to number eight. At number eight, we have Acer Palmatum, Amber Ghost. Guys, I could probably put this as my favorite ghost series. I don't know. It, I, I go back and forth on this one. I've got a really nice size one in my own garden. I love Amber Ghost. It it just has some beautiful shades. It definitely, Amber is a great way to describe that color. I mean, it's kind of an orangey yellow glow. It is so unique for that reticulated variegation. Uh, larger leaf. Talon actually says it's one of the better formed ones, if I remember right. He loves the shape of this one for the Ghost series. It's a little bit more vigorous than many of the other Ghost series, probably why it gets produced a lot in the trade. It's still pretty rare. I mean, I don't think you see Amber Ghost enough for what it is. I think you should probably see it in every garden center in America for what it is. Um, starkly different and contrasts so well with basically every Japanese maple out there. Uh, you can't say enough good things about Amber Ghost. The amber reticulation on this plant in the spring to the amber reticulation new growth during the summer. That's amazing. The fall color on this plant is electric. Some bright, bright oranges. It has a nice upright form like Matt was talking about. It was found as a chance seedling from Akashigatsusawa and was introduced and named in 1996. Of the Ghost series, Amber Ghost is spectacular. It's extremely heat tolerant. I mean, it's probably, one to me, I think it's one of the more heat tolerant of any of the ghosts. Right. I've seen it again in, in near Atlanta doing great in high heat humidity, full sun exposures. It definitely once established, uh, but it, it is a, a showstopper. I, I would say it may be the fastest of the ghost series to sell out for us. Like it may be the one the customers pick as the top tree of the ghost series. It's, it's definitely in contention. I've done more purple ghosts than Amber ghost, but 
If they were equal in number, it would be interesting to see who won that battle. So at number seven, we've got a new ghost. And we're talking about a plant that Talon wasn't even going to introduce. <laughs> he didn't even like this one at first. And then this plant became a tree that so many people saw in his evaluation, his rising stars, and that they wanted it, that Talon said, you know, maybe I should keep that one for myself and introduce it. We're talking about Acer Palmatum wave leaf. I really like wave leaf. I'm sure a lot of people are like, blasphemy, he's got wave leaf over amber ghosts. <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely the one of the highest, uh, not the highest, but one of the highest of our new ghosts on this list. Uh, I love wave leaf. It's got a shiny, glossy sheen on the leaf and a wavy leaf. It's, it's a very dark version of almost purple ghost with a smaller leaf that is glossy. I mean, it almost glows when you look at it in person. I don't think photos ever do this one justice. If you see Acer palmatum wave leaf in person, it quickly becomes a plant that you love, especially if you see it in that spring reticulation. You can really get some nice lavender purple shades on this plant as well mm -hmm. with that reticulation that's very prominent on a glossy, shiny leaf. I mean, I've never seen a Japanese maple that sh had that shiny leaf like wave leaf does. Oh, it's one I can't get enough of. I'm a huge fan of this one. Um, I had it in production. I'd offered it. I'd sold it. I saw some large ones available retail, and I paid retail even on a nursery for some massive plants of this just to make sure I had larger stock plants to provide more of it because it blowed me away. Every time I see this one, it, it's it's high on my list. I I, I, I love the, the, the plant. Um, Wave Leaf could definitely have been one of the members of the Ghost Series, being that lineage, but its coloration and its shininess, I think, give it something that stands out amongst any of the reticulated trees Talon Buckholz has named. Number seven, I think Waveleaf is heavily deserving of that. The more people see Waveleaf in person, it will start becoming more and more popular everywhere. So coming in here at number six, we've got Acer Shirasawanum Bronze Age. Love Bronze Age. Talon's wife actually said this is one of her favorite introductions that Talon has ever introduced. And it's one of our favorites as well, coming in at number six out of all of his introductions. And I think unlike us and Talon, she might only have one favorite. I don't know that she picks every single tree as her favorite. <laughs> we were eating dinner with her at the Maple Society meeting, and she said, she said, in full candidness, she said, that may be my favorite of all, is Acer Shirasawa on Bronze Age. Love this color. This can get some uh, amazing shades of just unreal, almost pink red over top of that green in the early spring. It does make like a bronzing of colors where you get some yellow undertones in that. It goes through some amazing shades. I've had some really rich, bold, almost orangey yellows in the fall that that were just intense uh, with some hints of different colors in there as well. It's really been a showstopper for that fall color. I think it makes an, an excellent pairing with Moonrise. I love to think of Bronze Age as the darker accompaniment to Moonrise. The leaf isn't quite as round as Moonrise. It's definitely got more Palmatum style influence in it, but I love what it does. I love the color changes. Uh, I think it's a perfect tree to plant. If you like Moonrise, this one's kind of like the bronze cousin of, of, of the Moonrise there that really puts on some awesome displays. Yeah, a little more deeply divided foliage, that bronze color, everything's in a name, and this name perfectly describes what this plant does with those bronze colors. Bronze Age, it's one of my favorites. It's one of our employees' favorites here. I know when they saw it in fall color with those yellows, with a little bit of orange in there, they said, Wow. And we sold a ton of them to our employees before we ever listed it on Mr. Maple because this plant is an amazing plant. Yeah, it's highly sought after. I think as it becomes more known in the trade, it's even more popular. Uh, it kind of takes a while. Sometimes we list stuff on Mr. Maple and they sell out, but people almost don't believe it. Like they have to see some people post pictures of it. We got Brian Rule, who used to be over there in Oklahoma working for us now. So it takes a couple guys like him. And uh, Alan LaFoe and a few people saying, check this plant out. Holy cow. Check out my spring. Check out my fall. This thing is insane. And then people start to really understand that this thing really is what we're saying it is. It's insane. And uh, Bronze Age, I think, is catching up to that. I think people are really starting to find out what this tree can be in the landscape for them. It's a good grower. It's quite vigorous. Tends to be over a foot of growth a year for us with a great form. And uh, for that reason, at Bronze Age coming in on our list at number six. Okay, guys, we've went from number 50 all the way down. 
Our next one is number five. For number five, tune in to next week. No, just playing, just playing. Number five on the list is Acer Palmatum Celebration. Acer Palmatum Celebration. Uh, Talon Buckholtz candidly told us this may be his best tree ever introduced. Now, when we hear something like that on the phone, we get heavy into produ- production of it. So we started grafting the hound out of this. It's something we're huge fans of. It's one of the most intense pink forms of a reticulated Japanese maple. Think of purple ghost with all the crazy shades of bright pink. All right, so I've got the cheat sheet. I've got Talon's notes. And again, it'll be exactly what Matt said. Acer Palmatum Celebration was introduced in 2014. It is possibly one of our best introductions ever with bright purple red that stays more vibrant red than its parent purple ghost. The origin this originated from a group of seedlings that were germinated in 2007 and has always stood out from everything else. So celebration highly sought after again with a lot of these new ghost talents said, we'll let the market figure it out. Well, the market loves this one because I can't graft enough celebration. Every time I have it, it sells out. It's a very popular plant. It's one that's highly sought after for good reason. Uh, pair this with purple ghost wave leaf, Amber Ghost, it is so strikingly different than many of the other Ghost series. I think it brings so much to the table. Early morning sun, late day shade will give you some of the best colors on this one. I have grown it in full sun here in zone 6B, but early morning sun will pick up that pink and give it kind of a neon pink hue to it. Celebration is my favorite of the new Ghosts. For me, it is amazing. And it is one of my favorite introductions that Talon's ever introduced. Obviously, it's at number five. But this plant is spectacular. That pink red color that it gives is unlike anything else. And the vibrancy that that color gives when it's reticulated is outstanding. I mean, you said pair this with a lot of ghosts. I like to pair this with the yellows, obviously, because that color contrast is crazy. And this is a plant that just gives you the outstanding colors in the spring like anything else. I mean, unlike anything you've ever seen. Celebration definitely deserves a spot in your garden. If you don't have it, go to Mr. M. Maple right now. We're offering it probably right now when you're listening because we try to do as many of these as we can. Celebration, amazing plan. All right, guys, we've broke the top five with Acer Palmatum Celebration. We've counted all the way down from number 50. Many of you can imagine what's left. We're about to get real controversial up here. So get those knives out and come after us. (laughs) I'm joking. Next up, we have... Acer Palmetto Mayday at number four on our list of the best overall Talon Buckholtz introductions. We're talking about a Makawi Atabusa type with an amazing, amazing orange-like spring color. Orange to salmon kind of color. Goes to some really nice shades of that sort of blonde yellow right after that. I mean, for a Makawa type, this one is starkly unique and very different. Yeah, I first saw this when we were touring... Uh, Talon Buckholtz Nursery in 09 with the Maple Society. And I was walking around checking out plants and it just was in an area. I think Pinky was even there too at that point of just weird Makawa types. And it was stored in the corner of the greenhouse and we were just blown away. We're like, Mayday, we've got to know about this. We've got to get this going. Um, You know, I love Mayday because it brings some intense shades of yellow. And I think it is the perfect yellow of the Makawa Yatsubusa forms. Uh, I have some really old, mature stock plants that are upwards of four foot tall now. We're definitely going to do a cultivar highlight on this next spring and show you some of those in my Makawa garden. Um, we're huge fans of Makawa Yatsubusa, as you guys know. It's one of our favorite categories. We've kind of coined the term Makawa Yatsubusa family here at our nursery because we like people to think of those Makawa forms almost like a ghost series. And, you know, because those are some of our favorites, it's no surprise that Mayday is very, very high on our list. Coming in at number four for Talon Buckholtz introductions. So on his notes, he says, Acer Palm Maidem Mayday is a selected seedling from Makawi Atabusa. I figured that. It says its foliage is a cream white for most of the year. That's really interesting. And it was introduced in 2013. Yeah, awesome plant. Um, I love it for its changing shades. Um, one of the crisper leaves, very... Uh, very clean looking leaf, very um, tightly shingled layering, just like you'd think of with, with uh, Makawi Etsubusa. It's got that density to it that has that bonsai-esque look to Makawi Etsubusa that's so popular, but with some great color variations. 
I will say this is probably our fastest one on the entire list out of all 50 to sell out when we list it. Um, we scooped up most of Talon stock plants of this when we could, so we do have a great source for Scions. People get frustrated with this one a good bit. We, we might list upwards of 50 of this one sometimes on our website. They sell out in a matter of minutes. I've had I've had um, forty plus stock pl- or forty plus one gallons go on Mister Maple at ten a.m. on our ten at ten and sell out in two minutes. And so it is one that people can be frustrated with. Uh, fret not, we have a ton of stock plants on this one. I actually just cut a ton of wood at the time of uh, making this video last week, so we're grafting a ton of these. We're getting it heavy into production. It's one we're always upping numbers on. Uh, we do the 10 at 10 every Tuesday at 10. So our goal is never to make anything hard to get. We are collectors at heart. So we love making the weird, fun, new things like Mayday available as frequently as possible. And to do that, we actually scooped up, I would say, the majority of the stock plants on this. We've got a lot of these in the ground producing Scion so that we can continue to offer it in higher and higher numbers. I mean, I, I would love to see Mayday offered at at least half the numbers of Makawi Etsabusa one day. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be that would be amazing. I I remember seeing this plant in Talon Buckholz's nursery in 2009. When we went and visited his nursery, and I remember sitting down with him at the Maple Society meeting when it came to Asheville, and saying, "I need this plant. Right. <laughs> I need it, please." <laughs> it's not like an option. It's like I need this, <laughs> and and we ended up getting a, a mayday, and you know. That plant is amazing. I think, how many do you have in your yard now, Matt? Oh, gosh, don't ask that. There's there's the four-foot <laughs> one that's probably four foot by three foot. That's the big one. Um, I I would say about six maydays <laughs> are planted in my, my yard. Um, we normally keep two of everything in the ground. Um, in the uh, adjacent landscape areas, I have upwards of five more in the ground producing signs. So we've got some nice size ones. All of those, I would say you know, range from two to three foot to that, to that four foot plus one. So we've got some good sources for these. We're going to continue to maximize scion production on this one so that we can make it available to you as frequently as possible. So if you're one of those people that does feel, you know, a little offended when this one sells out quickly, Hey, the Mr. Maple guys are working to get it back in stock and uh, we, we will for sure. So number three, we've got an amazing plan again. I mean, all of his introductions are spectacular. And as we get towards the top, it just becomes more and more. We've got Acer Palmatum, Geisha Gone Wild. I mean, this one had to be high on the list. It's an awesome plant. It is a sport found on Geisha. um, And actually, almost an improvement on Geisha. This one has, you know, more of an upright form than that ball form of Geisha. It's got some darker foliage going on in it, which makes it a little bit more vigorous and a little bit more durable. Um, Geisha Gone Wild is one of my favorite pink on red variegations. Um, it's just a great plant. It's one we produce a lot of. It was high on our list for top sellers of 2022 on a recent podcast we did on the top sales items of 2022. And it makes sense. I mean, it's highly sought after by the customers, but it's one that Tim and I, you know, every time we go to production, we're like, Hey, have we produced our Geisha Gone Wilds yet? Make sure they're out there because people love it. We love it. And you know, we can't do enough of it. Gays are going wild for me is spectacular. It gives unreal colors of bright, bright pink, bright, bright pink on red with an upright form. It's one of the more vigorous upright forms of a pink and red variegated. That's extremely stable. My wife actually loves Gays are going wild as well. I think when we shot the video for our Gays are going wild, she actually introduced the video. Gays are going wild. According to Talon was originated as a mutation on the unstable cultivar geisha. Indeed, it went wild. This is one of our most popular introductions in terms of sales. It is a strong grower and can take Oregon's brutal sun and low humidity. In fact, it is more vibrant in full sun than in shade. Introduced about 2003. Yeah, awesome plant here. Uh, Again, Talon speaks to its durability as as a variegated plant that's actually very heat tolerant. Um, one of my favorite time frames for this one is in late spring, right as you're getting into summer color, you get some green shades in this one. I mean, in early spring, it is a pink on red. Um, I love that green stage though, where it gets a little green undertoning in there, but you still have some bright, hot pink on there. It's so showy. Uh, and again, the fall is pretty nice too. You can get to the brighter uh, 
red part can get to a really picked up bright red with a really bold red on that accent. So you get some really nice shades even in the fall of two tones of really intense reds and the perfect mid-sized tree. I mean, this is a tree that's not going to get massive in most people's landscape. I like to think of it as like a, a variegated fire glow. So it's like something that people can grow that don't want something that's going to outgrow their landscape. I mean, there's a reason why it's so heavily sought after. It had to keep getting bumped up on our list here. I mean, there's so many things this pushed down further on the list because every time we go to produce, we're like, hey, we got to get some more Geisha Gone Wilds. I mean, everybody wants this one. It's 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 high in demand for good reason. And, uh, you know, even though I've grown a ton of this one, it's I still find myself thinking – Number three seems about right. That that one has to go up pretty high on the list. Number two, Acer Palmatum, Purple Ghost. Okay, so Purple Ghost, probably the most mainstream of the Ghost. You know, Ghost series, you know, we're going to dominate any list made about Talon Buckholtz. Uh, we're all the way down from number 50 to number two, and that's Acer Palmatum, Purple Ghost. The most popular of the Ghost series. I mean, I think it really, really shocked people when this one first came out, how purple it is. Uh, you know, we joke about blue Japanese maples being fake. Purple ghost isn't fake. It is insanely violently purple. And it's just really cool. It's one of those trees that, that you get the right coloration on at the right time of the year. You get a picture of it. People are going to look at that and they're gonna be like, there's no way that's real. I mean, there, it looks insane. I have seen some fake photos of bones. I have this before. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so if you Google purple ghost, you will see some photos of bones that have been, the f- color has been altered, but on mrmaple.com, you can go and look through the different shades of lavender to fuchsia purple that Purple Ghost can really go through on some amazing photos. And Purple Ghost, it's spectacular. I'm looking here at the notes here, and while many of the other Ghost series came as seedlings from Aka Sawa, this one actually came as a seedling from Kasagiyama, which is pretty interesting because it's it's so different from Kasagiyama. And it's really, it's really better in a lot of respects at to Kasagiyama because that purple color is just unreal and unlike anything else. Now, I know one of the reasons you see purple ghosts in the nursery trade is because it's a good grower. It fills out, it grows over a foot of growth a year, which is quite vigorous for a ghost type, uh, makes a nice upright tree, and has a very, you know, what you think of with a classic upright Japanese maple. So it has that mid-sized form. Um Beautiful plant, though. I mean, the, the form is equally as nice as the color. That's why it moves up so high on the list here. Everybody loves Purple Ghost. Uh, it's one of those ones that when people see it for the first time, they have like an emotional reaction to it, especially if you see it in early spring. It's it's intense. One of my favorite things we did was when we were running around the gardens with Talon during our last trip to Oregon, and we got to walk around the gardens with him and talk about all the plants, and we were literally standing beside the original Purple Ghost in perfect fall color, and I'm like, all right, guys, it's time for a selfie. <laughs> and Talon's like, a selfie? I'm like, yes. You're, you're get, we're getting a selfie right now, Talon. Just smile. So we got a picture there with Talon with the original Purple Ghost in kind of its bold, almost fiery red. It gets really nice shades of red in the fall. And a tree's in peak color. I love Purple Ghost for so many reasons. Um, and, and so does the trade. I mean, that's one that's going to leave its mark on maples from now on. I would say, you know, maybe the most popular overall tree on this list for production for most nurseries might be purple ghost. I would say that's probably the one that's hit the mainstream, the hardest off this list. Uh, but you I mean, know, it's you, nothing mainstream about purple ghost. I mean, you find it in Europe, you find it in America, you find it everywhere because it is so unique and so different. Yeah. I mean, I would probably say it's the most well-known one also off this list. If you went by, you know, your average gardener who likes Japanese maples, but doesn't know, Mayday. <laughs> they're they're gonna they're gonna look at this list and be like, I know purple ghost. That thing's crazy. I saw it. And uh, you know, just everybody has kind of a reaction to this one. When you first saw it, um, it is it is a staple now in the nursery industry all over the world. All right, guys. Next up we've got number one. And before we get to number one, we gotta tell you all about mrmaple.com. We had ten new trees every single Tuesday at ten AM Eastern Standard Time. That's trees every single week. Go to mrmaple.com right now. Sign up for our weekly emails. You won't regret it. Yeah, there's always something new and flashy coming back there in our tenant tens at Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern. That's the time you want to do that. Even if you're a West Coast viewer, know that happens at 10 a.m. Eastern. A lot of these Talon Buckholtz introductions made their original debut into the market on that tenant ten. That's how a lot of these were first seen. Uh, we were very honored that Talon allowed us 
uh, many times to evaluate some of these and to get them out there very first here on MrMaple.com. In fact, I would you'd be surprised if we did a list of what first came to Mr. Maple before it hit anywhere else on this list. There's a lot of plants. All right, guys, have you had time to guess yet what number one out of all of our 50 favorite Talon Buckholtz introductions are. Now, again, this is the definitive list that Tim and I made, so it's got to be right. I mean, we're just kidding here. This is all subjective. But we've made a list of our very favorite 50 introductions by our good friend and mentor, Talon Buckholtz. Coming in at number one, if you hadn't guessed it already, is Japanese Princess. Japanese Princess. This plant is amazing. We were recently walking through Tony Avent's garden at his home directly next to his home and right beside of his home with talent buckles with talent buckles yeah. he had a japanese princess planted right there in the ground yeah it's one he had right next to his doorstep he looks at it every morning and for good reason uh, this is the perfect form of makawa yatsubusa it's a variant of makawa yatsubusa that was one of the earliest again we like to consider this a family of the makawa family and kind of throw that in there like that ghost series so we have a whole little series of fun makawa yatsubusa forms and Japanese princess, one of the first variations of this that really encapsulated everything people loved about Makawa Yetsubusa, adding color variation. This one can have that intense pink color in early spring, especially in full sun. If you're giving it more shade, you can actually change the color quite a bit. It actually has some light pink growth with kind of blonde undertones to it. Now, this one has a very ruffled leaf to it. It's a very unique texture. It's actually a lot smaller, too, than its predecessor of Makawi Yetsubusa. It's going to be a more dwarf compact form, making it the perfect tree for the container garden. That Makawa shape also gives it that bonsai-esque look. So that everybody loves Makawa because of that tight shingling layering. And you're going to get that with Japanese Princess, just pink and ruffled. And that's the thing like I love about Japanese Princess. That leaf is so unique with that curling, twisting leaf. It really stands out from all the other Makawi Atabusa variants. This plant was introduced in 2007. And I'll just read the description from Talon because this is our favorite of his introductions. Acer Palmatum Japanese Princess originated as a seedling from Makawi Atabusa, and it featured the same type of growth habit. New growth is a pink red in the spring, then it evolves to a cream white with greenish veins. Fall color is an orange red. This plant is spectacular. It's a, become very popular for bonsai. It's become a plant that's great for container gardens, fairy gardens, great for container culture and growing Japanese maples in a container on your patio or your deck. It has become one of the most popular, popular plants with Japanese maple collectors because it's unique and it's very different. I mean, not only in its color than Makawi Yatsubusa, but the way that leaf twists really stands out and is very special. This one still sells out very quickly for us, although we've offered it a lot here at Mr. Maple. Again, another one we have a ton of stock plants of, so we're able to obtain a lot of sign wood off of our stock plants in the ground. We're actually planting like 10 more plants of this just to be able to meet demands for you guys because everybody wants a Japanese princess. Uh, an amazing tree to be growing in the landscape. It is definitely slower growing and more dwarf at like three feet when Makawa was more like four to five feet, so it's even dwarfer than Makawa Yetsubusa. Um, I, I love it though. It's one that certainly, uh, you know, a lot of things could come for that number one on a Talon Buckholtz list, but it's hard to think of a better plant than Japanese princess. So all y'all who are listening, you know, y'all can start thinking about your top five, all those that are watching in this on YouTube right now and are involved in the live chat for the very first time, put your top five of Talon Buckholtz's introductions and we'll see if y'all's come out the same as ours. Guys, we hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into the top 50 introductions by our friend and mentor, Talon Buckholtz. Now, Talon's been so gracious to us. Um, he has been such an influence on Mr. Maple. Uh, he's been someone who's always helpful. I remember the first time we met Talon, uh, we ran and got his autograph like we met Michael Jordan. We actually got a poster, and Tim and I were there playing rock, paper, scissors outside of his hotel room to see who was going to knock on the door because we were both a little nervous to ask Talon for his autograph on that poster. We still have that poster. It's uh, something we're very, very prized uh, to have in our collection of important pieces of history for horticulture. That's something we love. We love preserving the stories behind these plants, and we love talking about the people that introduced them. Oftentimes, the people that introduce these plants are as interesting, and their stories are interesting as well. So if you want to hear more and learn more about Talon Buckholtz, definitely go check out our podcast where we sit down with the legend himself, Talon Buckholtz. We interview him. 
Uh, we ask him all kinds of candid questions and it's one of my favorite interviews we'll ever do. I don't know how long we'll ever do this podcast. Maybe if we do it for 10 years, that's still going to be in my top. I mean, it's just, he's one of the the most interesting people we could ever talk to when it comes to Japanese maples. Um, you know, he's on par with all the greats and, uh, Talon is just a treasure. He's someone who's treated us always very kindly. That's one of the reasons we want to talk about some of his introductions, not only because they're just legendary, Talon sent us handmade books from Japan before. He's someone who's always reached out to Tim and I, encouraged our growth. He's a big fan of our introductions. We've let him evaluate and critique the Area 51 collection here some, and we've definitely sent him uh, a lot of our plants that we name and try to get his feedback as well on what he thinks is the best and what's worth introduction and what's worthy of cultivar status. And it's really cool from somebody who's, I mean, gosh, this list could be way larger than 50. I mean, it was really hard to cut it down to just 50, but to have somebody with 50, I mean, staples in the nursery industry to evaluate our stuff, it's a lot of fun. It's very crazy how Bear Trees mentored him. And he had a lot of other mentors as well, but Bear Trees mentored him. And at the same time, Talon has mentored us. And we never got to meet J.D. Veritrees, but we've learned so much because of what he did and worked with Talon. Yeah. I mean, it, it it just shocks me. We really hope you enjoyed today's video on the top 50 Japanese maples, the series, the top 50 Japanese maples by Talon Buckholtz as ranked by Mr. Maple. Yeah, we, we kind of just got in here and hashed it out and talked about some of our favorites. If you haven't already, definitely take a look at part one where we go through uh, number 50 to number 26. And then in this video, we're breaking down 25 through number one of our favorite Japanese maples by Talon Buckholtz. Again, legendary nurseryman and somebody who has left their imprint on Japanese maples to the max. Uh, I mean, 50 introductions here. And like I said, it could have been a much larger list. I mean, there were things we cut off this list that would have been people's number one. If you really liked this type of podcast and this type of information, make sure to give us a five-star review on your favorite podcast platform. We would really appreciate that. Also share this video with your gardening friends. That helps us so much. Word of mouth is a great way for other people to learn about our podcast. As always, we really appreciate if you would shop on mrmaple.com. That allows us to keep doing more and more of these podcasts. Yeah, every single thing we've named in all 50 of these have been on MrMaple.com and are coming back. So there's not a single plan on here that we won't continue to produce and produce in larger numbers. So that's one of our favorite things about rare and interesting plants like the Buckholtz list here. Uh, they're plants we're, we're proud to bring here at Mr. Maple. And so if you heard about something that's not currently on our website, you can always sign up to get notified via email when it's back in stock on the cult of our page on MrMaple.com. Uh, again, the big numbers of these hit the 10 at 10. So be ready for that 10 at 10 on Tuesdays. We hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into our top 50 favorite cultivars by Talon Buckholtz. Take care. God bless. And have a great day. <laughs>